was just quickly chatting to one of the other guides who is just close by just asking me a question quickly but you'll see that Shongila will probably move a little bit now they're going to start their vehicle and, and they're moving out to allow space for somebody else so she might pop her head up again she's quite a curious little cat often when there's movement of cars around her tend to see her moving and checking and looking what's going on so I wouldn't be surprised if she does pop her head up to see everybody and to see what's happening Hosanna has not really moved much I can see he's breathing so he's okay but he's not moved much at all now of course it's been a tough week when it comes to the or well, tough actual month when it comes to the leopards we've had lots of bad news so I'm sure a lot of you are aware of Salesh in the west is no longer with us which is a very sad situation now there's no known cause for her death yesterday she died yesterday but she was seen in the morning moving and scent marking and then found in the afternoon so we're not sure what's happening they are going to be doing a necropsy on her and we'll be able to then fill you all in with more information as to what actually happened a little bit later in the week and it's definitely something maybe internal or con particularly could be a snake bite but we'll know a little bit more once the week is out so for those of you that are asking and wondering about Salesh that's the story no one really knows yet what the situation is but she certainly will go under a few tests and those will might take a bit of time to get the results back but as soon as we know more we will let you all know so hopefully these two youngsters are going to stay nice and safe and stay in the central part of Juma under the protection of Tingana and try and stay out of the way of all these other threats that are around. Now I know a lot of you are saying that a lot of the leopards, we've had quite a few losses, but a lot of them have been from lion related, which is unfortunately part of it. Anka, you were saying with Karula not around, who's going to force Hosanna out of his territory well Anka it would never have been Karula that would have forced him out anyway a male is not forced by the female he's forced by other males so unfortunately for Hosanna with Tingana, Gajima, Mvula, um, potentially Shavambalana I don't know where he is at the moment but he could be around you've got Quarantine, Anderson and even this unknown male that was seen in Biffles Hook recently, those three, are the, or those, sorry, those males are the ones that are going to be putting pressure on Osana. So he's going to have to try and eke out a small territorial area within all of that to be able to actually survive and to be able to spend time in this particular s section. And I think he's going to have a really tough time to find his way in this area. There is a small territory just to the south of us, so Little Gauri Hoffmans, that Tingana spends a bit of time, but not as much as he does up this further northern side. So he might be able to eke out a territory there to start off with, and then as Tingana gets older, push up. But as anyone gets at this stage. Also remember that there is a number of different leopards all on the fringes that will be vying for this territory. There's females here, there's the Shongile, Tandi, Shadow, these kind of girls that are going to attract males in, and that's going to make it very difficult for a male leopard like Hosanna to actually end up being dominant within this particular section. Also, we don't particularly want him dominant here on Juma because there would be then quite a bit of inbreeding. So we would have a situation where he's going to breed with his sister or his um or stepsisters in the form of Tandi and Shadow, he could potentially breed with them. And so you're having a, a, a bloodline that is being compromised. It's better for him to be shifted slightly and for different males like Kojima or um, Anderson, Tingana to be mating with these females so that we keep the genetic mix good. So it's more that Hosanna is going to move. Shongila herself at the moment is sitting in an interesting position because I really am not sure what's going to happen. Now with Salahesh away in the west, it's really a massive piece of land that's up for grabs. I would I would imagine that Insele is going to start pushing into it a little bit. You know, we know Tiani's around. There's also Moya on that side. But Shadow herself might also start moving a little bit further to the west as well. So it could leave that section now for Shongile to, to survive and, and grow up in this area and be able to actually secure this for herself. It's going to be really interesting to watch what goes on. So it's going to be a very sort of key period for Shongile and I hope that with all of this that's been going on that she can secure this little northwestern corner of as her own for the next few months and years and start getting herself dominant within this Juma system as continue the lineage that is Karula. It would be really great if we had Shongile here for that much longer and she became the sort of new queen of this particular section. But you can see she's a very sleepy cat at this stage. <laughs> Still stretched out, tail out. Oh, there we go. 
Tiffany, you're wondering how long leopards normally sleep for? Well, Tiffany, it's a obviously it's a difficult thing. They don't normally sleep for any amount of time. It just depends on what goes on around them. So sometimes leopards will sleep in a situation like this where they're full-bellied, it's quite warm. They'll probably sleep most of the day away and only start to really get fairly active around sunset. And you'll find though if she was hadn't eaten, she might have been far more active. We know Shongili and Hosanna, both of them are fairly active cats. When they are not full, they tend to move around quite a bit, so she might have walked around during the day quite a bit. So it's difficult to say. I mean, sometimes they'll rest for 10 minutes, sometimes they rest for an hour, sometimes it's 10 hours. There's really no sort of yardstick to say that they will rest for this amount of period, well, this amount of time per resting session. You can also imagine now if, let's say, hypothetically, elephants came through here and chased them. There's all kinds of factors that will determine how long they sleep for. But theoretically, within a 24-hour period, these guys can easily sleep over 10 hours and recuperate and rest. But they're not quite as bad as the lions in terms of sleep. The lions tend to sleep much longer periods of time during the day. A lion can go up to 20 hours a day. Whereas these guys tend to be a little bit shorter and move around a lot more than what the lions do. Particularly individuals that are considered still nomadic. At the end of the day, she's none of Hosanna or Shungile has a defined territory. They're not scent marking. They're just moving around in this area, their natal area, and growing up. Once they become territorial, then you'll find that the movement pattern, they tend to slow down a little bit. They don't cover nearly as much ground every single day as they try and sort of seek safety and stay out of the way of all of these other territorial individuals. John, you're wondering at what age will Shungile be strong enough to hold a territory? Well, John, it depends on on a, a lot of things. I mean, as we were saying, you know, the disappearance of Karula, the disappearance, now, well, the, the death now of Salaesh is going to shake up the dynamics with this, within this area. But if we take Tiani in Chila, um, Tsakani, uh, who else has been the young females? Kuchava. These are all young females around us at the moment. And those young females, none of them, have set up a defined territory just yet. None of them are actually mated and have cubs and are scent marking extensively, but they're all about three and a half to four years old now, if you take a rough estimate of all of them, and yet they haven't set it up completely yet. So I would imagine that it's going to take her a little bit longer. We know her mother set up her territory and started having cubs already at two and a half, so it is possible, and if things play out the way that it could, potentially she might be able to be big and strong enough to do the same thing in this area she might have a lucky gap now in the fact that there's these two really prominent females with massive territories that have left or have left behind these territories that then allows for these leopards to form a small little territory and so we might have a lot of young females with small territories and then as time goes on they might expand those and you'll then get a little bit more of a sort of defined distribution between them all but it's certainly going to be very interesting to see how it goes it's at least as we were talking about last night, at least there are some young females in the area. Now, Alice, if you can just repeat the name there again for me, please. Sorry, there's a car right here, so I didn't hear very nicely. Deadhead Tom, you want to know how do they know when a territory is um, opened up or where there's no longer well it's quite simple there's no longer a chemical signature left all over the place there's no vocalizing of that particular individual so you would have found if it was let's say Karula in this area she was scent marking extensively she was vocalizing and as if she saw anybody or smelt anybody she would actively pursue that and push them out now you don't have any of that situation so it takes a few months if you think of um, in the case of Tandi, it took her about a month or two and she started pushing and pushing and pushing more and more and more. And now we see Tandi very regularly on the dam cam around the dam. We're finding her tracks a lot in areas that she never used to come to. So it's just all about those chemical signatures as well as then obviously the, the, um, the vocalizing that's no longer around. And that's how they work it out that there's no longer a territory there. They listen and they look and they smell. And once they realize there's no sort of scent of another leopard, they then stick in that area. And that's why I'm sure Shongile is hanging around a lot here at Galago and just northwest of this. There's no leopard that's really actively scent marking in this area. We know that Tandi does come close to this, but she tends to be more east. She's not very, well, we haven't seen her yet, anywhere to the west of Mvubu Road or... In fact, Galago Camp is probably a more accurate description, so we haven't seen her to the west of that yet. It's not to say she hasn't, but so far we haven't seen any 
evidence of it, and that means that Shungile can then hide out in this section and use that sort of passage between Shadow and Tundi's territory at the moment as her own. So between Little Gari and all the way up to Bufalzuk boundary seems to be this linear area that Shungile is moving around in. But she certainly is very sleepy. Kristen, you're wondering if Instinct is going to help with Shongile learning to scent mark? Well, most certainly there will be an Instinct once she starts to come into this estrus cycle and she starts to feel like her body is ready to be mated with, that's going to instinctively push her to start marking, to set out an area that she can then have her cubs and keep them safe. So that's what happens. And if you if you've ever had a domestic cat and and they don't they're not spayed or anything like that, you'll find domestic cats do the exactly the exact same thing. As soon as they start coming into sexual maturity, they start marking everything. They they pee everywhere to try and set themselves up so that when they are mating, that if they do produce cubs, that that area is secure and safe for them. So it is just a complete instinct thing and while she has watched her mom and she's seen her mom do it a few times it's more instinctual the same with the male leopard he gets to that point where he's now ready to mate he feels like he's big and strong and that will then start to cause for him to use to scent mark and to try and then secure a territory of his own so it does happen quite a bit with them as well and what happens with all of them like i say it's an instinct based thing now i'm just trying to see if there's not somewhere else we can maybe position that we can get a better view of not only Shungile, but Hosanna as well. I was thinking maybe we might go to the left of that little thicket and see if we can't look down, but there is another vehicle that is moving in behind us and it might be tough to actually move around. So we'll just have to sit for a little bit and be patient. Hopefully everyone will rotate through and we'll be able to spend a bit of time with them. I would imagine the sighting is going to be a rather busy one because, well, not only is it one leopard, but it's two. And after the last 48 hours of horrible weather where we've struggled a little bit with sightings it's going to be quite a busy one for a lot of people here you can see Shongile is completely not phased by all of this though Jackie you wanting to know when is the mating season well Jackie with the leopards there's no defined mating season female leopards will come into estrus at any point and as soon as they come into estrus they'll start to scent mark vocalize males will pick up that scent mark and know there's a chemical change within their urine and that these females are now in heat they'll then the females will actively search out the males or the males will act, find that urine and follow it and, and then mate with them so any time of the year you can have leopard cubs and breeding happening in fact we know that tundi and tingana have been mating for the last little bit and and so they've been mating and you'll find that we've had mating in the summer months it just really doesn't matter with the leopard as soon as she comes into estrus they will produce yeah. the reason why they don't have to worry so much and if it's in it's different to to a lot of the antelope species is that leopards have food items all year round so they're able to hunt and, and catch antelope and, and varying other food items from summer to winter to spring to fall it doesn't really matter whereas the antelope species they try and have their young that coincides with the rain season and the time of plenty that they can provide not only nutritious milk for them when they're small but also that the young ones can get nice nutrient rich grasses in their formative years and be strong enough to evade predation with the predators it's not the same they don't have to worry nearly as much and so that's why they can give birth at any time of the year is one very sleepy cat in fact two very sleepy cats i don't think Hosanna has lifted his head once since we've been here he seems to be flat 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 and i actually to be honest i'm not 100 percent sure it's even him <laughs> i think it's him just given what the other guys have told me aubrey was parked on the other side and he said it's Hosanna, so i think it's Hosanna. but uh, we could be talking about the wrong cat although just judging by the size it seems to be a very sort of accurate size for us it's not quite as big as tingana and I suppose Tumba could be another one to throw into the mix, but I don't know. I will have to wait and see. I'm sure at some point we'll get a better view of these two and we'll be able to tell exactly who it is. But it looks like Osana from here, just given the size of his body. And the fact that Shungila is so relaxed. Although we know she has spent time around Tumba. They once had a kill in a tree and he was around, so it does happen from time to time that they've bumped into each other. And it's such a strange case with Tandi, Tumba, Hosana and Shungile. Between them, they've all spent time together at random points, and it's, it's a really interesting study. And I would have loved 
to have been able to follow these two young little royal cubs as they've moved around over the last few months because I think they've been with a number of different leopards a lot more than what we actually realize. I reckon that these two have spent a lot of time around Tumba and Tundi and potentially they've even bumped into Shadow and, and her cub and it'll be really interesting to know what the social interactions is all the time when they are with these kind of with these other animals and, and how that all plays out. I'm pretty sure Tundi is not too phased by either of them because they're both small and they're not posing any threat at this stage. They were the same size as what Tumba is and so she's not too aggressive with them. And well Tumba he's just a youngster so he's just exactly like these two is looking for play friends and kind of just seeing other leopards and as long as they're not bigger than him and not being imposing to him he doesn't really worry too much. You could see when he saw Tingana the other day it's a little bit different. He sees that it's a much bigger individual and he knows that that's a threat and that's why he trots off with these two being of similar size probably find he's not nearly as intimidated by them of course that will all change in life are you tired my girl <laughs> shame it's a tough life being popular i don't think there's too many that are more popular than this little one and he certainly has got a huge fan base to be supporting her to become an adult and to survive through this next little phase so as far as leopards go she's got a lot of people in her corner hoping for the best for her but she's looking fantastic isn't she she's full she's fat she's got good muscle structure so she's looking as good as i've seen her since she left Kurulo. and whatever they had it was a decent meal so whether it be a diker or a small impala it was something like that because even hosana has got a slight bulge i can see from here his belly's a little bit big so it must have been a nice carcass that they've been on and it's most definitely what we were tracking yesterday is these leopards and I wouldn't be surprised they managed to grab something last night. Now we're going to carry on with our two sleepy sleepy cats and while we do that let's go across to Taylor McCurdy who I believe has found herself at a rather large piece of water. <laughs> 